in mind everything is still under construction so this is not final this is just our first two month experience of uh, having the solar so far first and foremost this is our battery room or the electric room we uh, specifically built this to uh, maintain all the equipment because we want it to last as long as possible and with that we installed even uh, air conditioning inside aluminum door because it's going to be exposed to the heat durable very nice so what you see here quickly you see a lot of cables and unfinished things that's just because these cables are actually temporary when it was installed the guys have already measured the proper length so what they're doing now, they'll uh, fix this up and there's going to be a two proper electric cable going into the inverters. So you won't see it messy like that. So that's going to be installed in the wall, just like you see here. That's going to be the finishing touches for these cables. Now, if we get into the batteries, they are different brands from the inverters. And uh, if you do a similar setup like this, you gotta make sure that they can speak to each other. So that's our research. They work along each other, the inverters and the batteries. So they are Dynes uh, brand, which is a highly reputable company in the uh, battery business, I guess. Anyways, each one is 10 kilowatt hours. So brand total of 30 kilowatt hours. And so far for us, that has been enough. The lowest percentage of battery when we wake up before sunrise has been a 47% battery and that's running with two air cons, fridge, uh, water dispenser that's hot cold water all day and uh, that, that was really pushing it to the limit for nighttime. However in the future I will add two more batteries so it's going to be 50 kilowatt hours uh, unless we get the uh, uh, wind turbine, that's what I've been thinking as well, just to generate some electricity in the night time. But uh, 30 is plenty enough for us so far. Here's the inverters. They are the other brand called D-E-Y-E. Deye. -E. D. D. <laughs> I just call him Dai. Dai, simple. Now, they are 16 kilowatt each. That's the maximum capacity of electric coming into each inverter. And what that means is when you've got two of them, you've got 32 kilowatt uh, power limit with the solar. So we only have around 24 kilowatts, almost 25 kilowatt of uh, uh, panels up there. And the reason why we didn't go straight away to 32 is because I wanted to test it out, see if 24 kilowatt of panels was enough. And so far, it's been exceeding all expectations because about 8 a.m. every day, the batteries are already full. I'm talking about two and a half hours of very weak sunlight coming onto the panels, and yet those 24 kilowatt panels they uh, they fill up the batteries almost instantly. Like uh, the peak hours of uh, battery charging is between like 10 a.m and 3 p.m. That's like the prime time of the day when the sunlight is hitting the panels the best or generating most amount of power. Now, we got some numbers and I'm gonna break it down when we get upstairs and uh, talk about them because we have some very exciting numbers about how much we're already saving by using this system. But before we do that, you can see here, this is our air conditioning. And uh, these are set on timer. So basically in daytime, it goes on 8 a.m. and shuts off 5 p.m. So this room temperature is set to dry and around 27 to 29 degrees Celsius. So long term, this is gonna keep the batteries alive the longest, having a proper room temperature. This system also comes with uh, the uh, electric panels and breakers. So if something happens here that is not correct, you know, the breakers will take over just like in any other house or machinery. Another thing, the safety feature is we have it set to, if the batteries go down to 25%, the whole system will shut down. And that's just to uh, keep the batteries uh, alive as long as possible. 
Same goes with other batteries. If you deplate them to zero, that kind of reduces their lifespan. So this safety feature is uh, already programmed in the system. And then here on these screens, you can uh, always see how much electricity is being generated into the batteries, how much the house is uh, spending at the current time, and then uh, the whole kilowatt uh, spending during the day. And it also goes, it also breaks it down by day, months, years, shows you all the exact data. Now it's 6 a.m. Sun just picked up and uh, you're getting the rays hitting the uh, solar panels at the lowest angle which should be producing the lowest amount of energy. So let's go into the electric room once again and check out how much these panels are able to produce when you got the lowest angle of sunlight hitting them. So this is a great example of a whole day of uses the uh, batteries and system. We wake up with 65% battery and now that it's uh, 6.15 a.m. we are producing about 0.34 kilowatts and uh, that keeps going up now. When I got into the room it was 0 0.29, 0 0.3, 0 0.31, 33, 34, 35 now. So the higher the sun goes the uh, more power be able to produce. So let's see what the max power we get in about one hour. So here you can see on the screen the exact kilowatt hours produced in the last month. This inverter did about 175. And the main one, he produced 180, almost 200. Well, I would say about 190 kilowatt. Okay, 718 and I just finished watering the plant with the electric pump, of course. And what we can see now is the uh, solar panels are producing 3.85 kilowatts here. And this one 2.06. So roughly about six kilowatt coming in at 718 in the morning. And the batteries, 78%. So about 830 I would say, or nine. It's going to be fully charged already. Okay, so we have some nice numbers in and uh, I think in the previous video that I said something about uh, our electricity consumption and how the prices were, I think it was around 9,000. We, if you convert it to the, uh, this island price for 12 pesos per kilowatt. So before it was 9,000. And actually this month, we managed to reduce the power consumption down to 4,800 pesos per month. So we almost cut it in half. And that's because uh, we put the air conditionings, both of them, on timer. So at around 12 o'clock in the evening, they automatically turn off. So with the air conditioning set on timer and reducing at least 8 hours of usage, and then with the uh, water dispenser, which actually consumes a lot of energy, we uh, just cut that off as well um, after dinner. Now we're also getting uh, timers, electric timers, that are gonna be connected to the water dispenser and perhaps the fridge. So what that means is this timer, which is connected to our sockets, it uh, has a uh, on off switch. So we're gonna reduce also few hours at night time for the fridges and the freezers. That's just how we're gonna maintain the batteries the best. I'm of course very happy that we got it down to 4,800, but if you're living in places like Cebu, that would have been 6,400, and if you live in Bohol, that would be 7,200. Come on guys, why are you drinking now and I'm recording? What we experienced so far with the uh, 24 kilowatt system, it is plenty enough. But what we don't have right now is... No gun out! We are of course very happy with the results so far. And uh, we managed to reduce our power consumption by half to maintain the batteries. But we still don't have five more air conditioning set up. And we don't have a water pool pump which is going to be running quite a lot during the daytime. Which is huge amount of electricity. There's also going to be a water heater for the pool 
which is another high electric consumption. We also are waiting for uh, two motor pumps to pump uh, water for the gardening, which is going to be automatic system in the future. So once again, going from uh, 9,000 pesos a month, you add those air conditioning, we are expecting easily 20,000 peso electric bill if we were connected to the electric grid here. But we're not, of course. If we're living in Bohol, if we're living in Cebu, this bill would be almost 50% higher. So uh, it is saving a lot, even though the electric bill is super low this month. But it's good to keep in mind how that consumption is, and we're always monitoring our usage here. Well, not always. We haven't actually monitored it for <laughs> a week or two. You know, we, we know every day when we started, we always went into the electric room, checking how much is battery in the morning, every single morning, just to monitor the nighttime. But now we basically stopped it. That's how confident we are in the system. And especially once we get the timers for the sockets, I that's going to be, that's going to be game changer. We have to uh, do a little bit of uh, investigation, how many hours we can turn off the fridges and freezers. This fridge here is a temporary, that's not the, the proper socket for that. There, down there in the kitchen part, they have a, he has a own a socket for it. Up, 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 up. So what's your thought on having the uh, off-grid system so far? <laughs> so far, amazing, no um, burnout. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the best part guys, no brownouts. So for me the best part about it obviously is that we don't have any brownouts anymore and uh, I work a lot online so uh, that has been a huge game changer that uh, we didn't have to run generators when there's brownouts because here on this island for some reason they schedule it maybe once or twice a month. But uh, where we were living, we had brownouts at least once a week. Yeah. And sometimes it was not not like a one hour brownout, it was you know, a whole day. We're talking about the, the previous place that we were renting. Yeah. So that obviously changes a lot for us here. Never to worry about that. And even you might be wondering, what about the, uh, how, how good are the panels when it's cloudy day or rainy day even? And to tell you the truth, it's generated plenty of power, enough power to at least sustain us so far. So let's uh, monitor that better in the future when we have all the systems up and then uh, we can see how much is generating or keeping up with all of our appliances. And we will also try, uh, though we have, a, how many airplanes do we have here? Seven? Seven. Yeah, but those sevens we're not gonna be turned on. Some of them are like, just being a pantry, the reason is we don't want to, uh, you know, like the, so the food, food stores food properly. Yeah. My recommendation for you guys, if you're thinking about going solar, is that don't set it up yourself. We know a few stories here that people try to save money by setting it up with themselves, and then they burn the cables, they uh, damage the inverter, the battery failed because they didn't have a professional doing it. Same thing when you go with a solar system like this, you need to have authorized personnel to set it up. Because if you don't, you will not get the warranty. So now we paid around 300,000 pesos for the setup. And now we get the 10 year warranty on the batteries, on the inverter, on the panels. So my opinion, well spent, no headaches, and they did it in almost two weeks. But now, but now they just have to do the finishing touches. Also, the the company that installed our solars are also installing our aircon. Yeah, and our appliances. They're yeah. doing everything, the whole package. So shout out to JR Electro in Dumaguete. I'll also uh, link you guys to them if you're this. GR C two, GR two, GR two. JR two Electro. Yeah. Excellent guys. Always super responsive. So quickly, the prices, uh, the batteries, this is about 600,000, the inverters, that's 300,000, and then um, all the accessories, the, uh, the frames, the cables, that was probably around 200,000, and then the setup 300. So grand total is actually more than 
1.2 million. That was just the shipment of material. So uh, our cost is probably 1.5 million. So if we break it down by minimum 20,000 a month, it will take 75 divided by 12. That would take 6.25 years to uh, pay off. And we're going to be spending here forever. A few decades, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be well spent, for sure. <laughs> Absolute no-brainer. And of course, since I started living here in Negros, uh, the prices of electricity, I think it went from 8 or 9 pesos. Now it's 12 in 3 years. So take that also in consideration that the prices are always going up and I don't think uh, the batteries and all that is going up as much as the, the normal prices and also if you're asking the water here the water bill you only have paying 35 pesos a month Woo! <laughs> and maybe the last thing I want to say about the uh, solar system is that it just gives you such an ease of mind while living here, you don't have to worry about when is the next brown coming, should we check Facebook, check with the electric company in Urico, when are they going to schedule it, so it's always going to back in your head that, uh, that it's going to be a brown so you have to schedule your day to do some other activities or go somewhere, just getting that ease of mind that that's no more there, it's great. And then there's of course more brown than the scheduled ones, um, when we were in Mayan Tupic by the beach, because there's construction there, how many times some trucks cut the lines. And then uh, when you drive around in many areas, a lot of the posts are just bamboo or a stick. <laughs> uh, so uh, temporary. temporary, I guess. And those fall down very easily. And that can of course cause a brownout, it can cause you know, fire, it can be multiple issues with that. So getting that ease of mind of having your own system of grid, is an absolutely revolutionary life game changer. <laughs> revolutionary. <laughs> Where did you get that word? <laughs> so this is not the final uh, video about our electric system. We have to do another one when everything else is operational. But until that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Highly recommend solar guys, but with batteries when you connect to the system you do like a hybrid system i cannot recommend that because we're not doing it my personal opinion i don't trust the meters that they have i don't trust the uh, setup the cables they do you know that's just my opinion so uh having it completely to yourself that's what i would go for how how about if the people are asking if they are from not in asia in other country like europe what do you mean of course, Europe has a good electric, right? Yeah, the, th the crazy thing about the um, hybrid system here is like in California, when you generate electricity in the daytime, you build credit. They don't allow it here, the electric company. So you can be generating huge amount of electricity, push it into the system, you're providing electricity for other people, and you will not get credit for it. So hybrid system, as of now, with these policies, uh, absolutely no way I would do that. So it's like a one-time payment. So it's gonna be expensive when you do the solar. It, exactly. But then again, it will generate in a few years. You know, it will worth it. It will become worth it. Yeah. Big setup like ours, you would have to, to live your five plus years in the Philippines then it's a no-brainer as long as you take good care of your batteries and inverter and that's why they said uh, <laughs> it's so fancy because the, the, the solar room have a own air <laughs> <laughs> own air code for the solar room <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. okay guys see you in the next one peace <laughs>